What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over manual blocking in a fighting game tutorial. So, for manual blocking, what I'm referring to is you press a button, your character blocks. And it's that simple. If you're blocking, you'll take reduced damage, or, you know, uh, not allow your enemy player to combo, things like that. So, easy enough. But, uh, I'm going to separate manual blocking and automatic blocking automatic blocking in my case would be like if you're walking backward and the player hits you uh then you automatically block just because you were trying to walk backward that is going to be where we get into more block stun um and things like that i wanted to get these videos out and separated just because i think it makes more sense that way and because you could definitely be looking for one and not the other so if you're not looking for both, no reason to uh, waste time watching both to get one done. So we're going to just implement block functionality today that will work for both of them. And then I'll show you how to do manual blocking. Next episode, blocking part two, we'll do automatic blocking and block stun. So to get started, let's go into our code as usual. We don't have to change anything except in the character class this time. So I'm going to show you I added some stuff again to the enum. I know, I'm sorry, but the enum is too good. It's got all of our character states, so we can use it for a lot of things. So we have all of our same stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. We have all of our same stuff, but we had I added running right, running left. We're not going to be using that today, but I wanted to, again, add all the states I could to not change as much as possible. And I will go over each of these when we actually use them. So feel free to skip these for now and not add them. But, you know, potentially running right, running left. I did add a blocking and a crouching as well. So crouching was a boolean before, and I decided why use a boolean if we're going to be using the character state for everything else. So the logic is the same that it was before, but instead of setting the boolean to true or false, I set the state to be crouching or default. I'll still show you how it works, but there you go. In terms of the functions, just have a start blocking, stop blocking function if we're doing manual blocking. It's basically the same way as we do crouch or stun. Basically, we want to have a function that begins at a certain time, and then when the end function is called, it is over. So in this case, it's just going to be start blocking when we start pressing the button, and when we release the button, we're going to stop blocking. And then nothing else over here, but you can remove your boolean is crouched if you'd like. That way it's not taking up space, since we won't need it if you're putting it in the enum. We go to our character class, make sure to remove is crouched from here as well in the constructor. Set up player input component. You're going to add your block P1, block P2, however many players you have if you're doing more than two player fighting game. And make sure you bind your actions. So as always just copy this and do block p1 instead of whatever commands you had like I copied my crouch commands but block p1 for pressed block p1 for released and then call the functions you want to call when we press it we want to call start blocking when we release it we want to call stop blocking here's how you can add the keys that you want to call the functions so if you go to edit project settings input Scroll down, and, or hit the plus up here by action mappings. And I added two, block P1, block P2. So hit plus to get your command. So click this one. I'll say like new action mapping. Rename it to whatever I called mine, block P1. Hit plus if necessary. Add your controls. I literally typed in one. It's one on the, on the, um, the keyboard. The other one is two, block P2. There you go. So when I press those buttons, essentially how this works is it looks for once this button or a button that is bound to this control. So block P1 or block P2 that we just set up. So one and two respectively. Then we're gonna call this function. So pressed one, call start blocking. Released one, call stop blocking. Press 2, call start blocking. Release 2, call stop blocking. There you go. Then, uh, just to show you, 
in start crouching and stop crouching, again, instead of setting the boolean is crouching, we now do character state equals ve crouching, character state equals ve default when they stop crouching. Blocking is going to be pretty much the exact same thing. So when we start blocking, we're going to set our state to be ve blocking. When we stop blocking, we're going to set it to be default. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in your move right function, we were checking if this was not, or if, if you were not crouching, if the player was not crouching. In this case, again, just change the boolean from is crouching to be if character state is not equal to character state crouching. And I also added another one in there and just made sure you can't move if the character state is equal to blocking. So if it's not equal to blocking, continue on. Do all your movement logic. There you go. All right, and uh, in here, honestly, we should add the jumping. I just realized that, that I split this up, but you know, whatever. I'll, I'll leave this alone for now, not to confuse anybody, but we could have the jumping in this statement too. All righty. Lastly, Scroll down to where we're taking damage and we're going to perform some logic to make our blocking actually work differently, right? If we're blocking, we want to take less damage. Or at the very least, we want to not allow the player to combo. So what we're going to do is we're going to intake damage, do an initial check to see if the character state is not equal to blocking. So if it's not equal to blocking, then we're going to take the full damage amount, player gets stunned, all that stuff. Else, we're going to make a float reduce damage is equal to damage amount times 0.5. So basically, we're going to half the damage amount. You could also do damage amount divided by 2. Multiplication is faster in computing, so it's better to do multiplication when possible. So damage amount times 0.5. This will be half your damage that gets put into the function. And then I put out a log in case you wanted to see we are taking damage, reduced damage for this many points. That way you can just see the different point value. And then player health minus equals reduced damage. Uh, here you could also make it again so your enemy cannot combo. However, other player has landed hit. Not being set to true uh, is a good way to do this. Since we're just skipping this entirely, we won't get the response that they landed a hit. Thus, we can do logic to make it so the player can't combo from that. Because, you know, he has to land the hit to combo. So, there you go. <laughs> That's the easiest way to do it. You could also, if you really wanted to, just set it to be can combo equals false. But I don't think it's necessary. And it might actually cause bugs down the line, which is why I avoided it for today. We'll get into it a little bit more next episode when we have the automatic blocking and the block stun. That way we can kind of show you how it works all together. But this is the same stuff as before. This should happen regardless if the player was blocking or not. If their health is less than zero, it's equal zero. That way the progress bar doesn't get all screwy, because sometimes that can happen. All right. And then I didn't add anything else in here, so you should be good to go. Let's scroll back up. Make sure you build, build solution. Then go into Unreal. Hit compile. Be all good to go. Then we're going to go into our mutant and MVP. Actually, let's go into our character real quick like we usually do. All right, so in the mutant character BP, this is where we can set up our controls for multiple characters on one input device or one player controller. Such a, Or not one player controller, but yeah, one input device is the best way to describe it. So in this case, we're just going to add the one for block P2 since the one for block P1 is set up in code and working. So literally type in your action name, again, mine is block P2, right here. On pressed, we're going to make sure we get our player 2 reference. We're going to check if it's valid, and then we're going to call start blocking. On release, we're going to get our reference, check if it's valid, and call stop blocking. There you go. Your second player will be able to block. If you need a refresher on this episode in the series where we did the two or more players on one input device, I'll link an iCard in the top right corner right now. There you go. So this guy's good. I'm going to close this window out. Um, I do have a mutant static block animation. 
So you can see this. If I could actually move properly, I don't know why I was doing the opposite. There we go. <laughs> so for this, uh, I've cut it down to one frame, but I've gotten this animation off Mixamo. If you want to know how to get free animations off Mixamo.com, then you can check out this video in the icon in the top right corner right now. Basically, that'll show you how to download and uh, import free animations for you that are legal and free use. But I had a mutant blocking animation, and I went ahead and just uh, cut the frames down. So I went literally at the very start of this, right click on the little red uh, square down here, and I can't do it because there's no frames right now. But if you had a bunch of frames, you could right click on it and say remove frames like one from 196, I believe mine was. So now mine has become exactly one frame because since it's a static block, and you could definitely have an animation for your block, but I'll show you. I just wanted it to be this one frame. If I'm in this state, I'm blocking. You could have some movement to your block, right? The character could be swaying back and forth or breathing or whatever. I didn't have that or an animation that in depth, so I just removed it and made it one solid frame. Uh, once we go into our mutant anim BP, we're gonna set up the logic to make it so we can transition to the blocking state. You don't have to do anything in the event graph this time around. That's pretty simple, pretty nice. All we have to do is edit the state machine. So, in this case, we're just adding the block animation, the block state, excuse me. So just type in add state right here. Type in block, I already have one. So I'm just gonna delete this one. That's this right here. Right now, I set it so we can only go there from idle because I am gonna set it up in the next episode when we do the automatic blocking to go from walking backward to block. But it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more in depth than what we're doing here, but not much. So we'll get to that then. So I just left it alone for now, but feel free to add this arrow just to kind of remind yourself, like, yep, this will be something that needs to happen. Um, from idle to block, all we're going to need to do is go into the transition. Basically check and make sure that the, get the, this is the character reference, right down here. Get their character state, that's that enum instance that we were setting in the code class. And check if it is blocking. So drag off of this and do equals equals. And you'll do um, equal enum, and it will be for blocking. If it is blocking, then we're going to go from idle to block. Pretty simple. So in block, it's literally this one frame animation. Then to go back from block to idle, we just check if the state has been not moving, which is VE default. I know not moving is kind of a bad name. I should say like return to idle or something like that, but this state started out as being, or this enum started out as being only walking left, right, or standing still. And then we used it for a lot of other stuff. So instead of not moving, think of this as the default state or just like the idle state. We'll be doing, I'll be changing the name probably for the next episode. But for now, just know that this is not moving is the same as default. All right, guys, there you go. So if you do that, then you'll take reduced damage when you actually uh, successfully perform a block. And you'll also be able to just literally block with two players on the spot, nice and easy. Uh, to kind of prove our point and make sure everything's working as we want it to, you can go to your output log here. If you don't have it, just do window, developer tools, output log then when we go to our window we can still see the output log in the background here if I am to hit this player normally you can see he's taking damage for 0 from the proximity hitbox and zero and point zero five or like 5 damage from the active hitbox now if he is to be blocking and I hit him he's only taking damage for 0 uh, point zero two five or 2.5 damage from that hitbox. Exactly half, like we wanted. And you can see it works for player two as well. So if he attacks, I gotta find his control. 
0 0.025 when I'm blocking and 0.5 when I'm not. Also, we don't go into any sort of damage animation when we're blocking, right? Because that just doesn't make any sense. We don't want to actually go into a damage animation uh, if we're blocking. So he has no hit reaction from it. You could go into like a, a, a block hit reaction where he, you know, kind of leans backward or whatever, receives a hit. It's the same as a hit reaction. So if you watch the last episode where we did hit reactions and hit stun, you can see it there and basically how to do that logic. But there you go, guys. So that's manual blocking in your fighting game. Next episode, we'll be doing automatic blocking and block stun. So if this video helped you or you want to see more, please subscribe. It helps this channel more than anything else you can do for it. And just, I really appreciate it. And it lets me know that I'm working on something you guys really enjoy, which I appreciate, of course. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions or issues with this episode or any other episode in the series, please feel free to join the Discord. I can't link it in an iCard, but it is in the description. And it will uh, bring you to a page where you can join the Discord. The Discord has over 100 members in it, and it's a bunch of programmers, artists, uh, all sorts of different stuff in there. And everyone helps each other with different things that we need, so if you have any issues with any part of this tutorial or any other tutorial, or just have genu uh, general programming questions, then go ahead and join, and we'll be happy to help you out. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Sean the Bro 27 because someone took my names on 27 26 other Sean the Bros took my name so uh, if you want to come check us out we do Souls Wednesday Resident Evil Friday or just Horror Games Friday we actually play Layers of Fear in the last uh, Horror Games Friday so anyway having a fun time with that and just you know figured I'd see if anyone wants to come by and have a good time in this great community that we've got so anyway guys I'm Sean the Bro. Until next time. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.